um, this is Jeff here. I'm showing you. I'm outdoors in my dri in my driveway on an old work table with a tarp. It just rained, and I threw this tarp down. I thought I'd show you a portable kit I use. Um, I do carpentry and woodworking a half for 30 plus years, and a lot of things had to be done on the run. And so, uh, along with all the other crap you carry, I think you need, I need, personally, my detailed finished carpentry and actually even some cabinet making tools. So, this is a design, a new box design I'm trying. And I want to give credit to a man from the UK whose design, uh, this is uh, originally his name is Jeremy Brun and um, credit goes to him for this design the sides rotate up and snap in and if you look for his video on a compact portable toolbox you will see this design but he did it in plywood and so forth so I think he would call this the posh version it's solid uh, pine, our American pine. Uh, I jointed some boards for this side and I used, uh, his had a beefy screw through here as a pivot hinge on, on each end. So it was hidden. I like the concealed aspect, but I went with a strap hinge. I like, I like the look of a strap hinge and I changed the dimensions to carry more stuff. Uh, like his, I put the dovetailed, my handle is a dovetailed tenon for an oversized cross rail that is your gripping point and this was spoke shaved out. I have small hands so I, I have to be able to get my hands in there and grip the thing and it's quite heavy but anything you're going to carry tools in is going to get heavy. Otherwise, you keep breaking down into more and more boxes and bags and and crap, and and you, you know you have trade-offs any way you do it. And believe me, I've tried for 30 years and not really been happy with anything that I've ever tried. But this is my latest thing. I think it gives a nice impression to somebody that's uh, you're working for, and they hope that you're a finished person, and you walk in with something made out of wood. I took number two pine and cut the knots out of it. So this is all uh, pretty looking and it is uh, clear finished. I put uh, shellac as a sanding sealer and then uh, actually Bullseye makes a universal sanding sealer. It's just a shellac wash coat and then I put clear uh, polycrylic on it. But these pop open and uh, you can put stuff in the lid. I'm currently using these. Uh, a lot of this is new stuff because I just went through all my hand tools and updated a whole bunch of old stuff. This, this hammer here is 50 years old. I, was, I had it as a child. So not everything in here is new. I, I'll never part with this Vaughn. I have several of these and I have the 13 ounce, but my my go-to hammer is a 16 ounce curved claw and this is an old tool it has some uh, first aid tape here as a helps my grip but a lot of things in here are new or new to me but um, I use these craftsman chisels they're a good stout chisel and they are actually good for mortising currently they're held with this velcro strapping. I tried the rare earth magnets that Jeremy Brune talks about. That's actually failed twice. If you could see the chisel pulls it sticks so good to the chisel it pulled away from the wood here and it was epoxy. So there you have it. A fail because those magnets are so incredibly strong. And um, the Velcro system, really the way to go 
would be just a, a slat of wood here that these tuck into and the Velcro system and then the stopper here. That's, that's enough. These are some quickie screwdrivers. Again, Velcro. If you, if, if you see me undo the Velcro, what you'd see is it's stapled to this with an upholstery stapler and then wrapped around and that, that holds it. I have a, a little multi-driver screwdriver is my go-to. Number two Phillips, regular slotted. Some quick marking layout tools. I, I, I love a speed square. I use it a lot. My go-to square is a combo square and then I still do use a fixed tri-square. Or at least I carry it enough. I carry a chisel hammer, a double-faced mallet. You can use it for a lot of things. It's a newer one. This is a cobalt. It's a good tool. I, I like it. The little, the little till comes out and you can get into the bottom I probably need to do another video with more of the contents, but I have in here a digital caliper, ratcheting screwdriver, a, uh, this happens to be a Stabla stick rule. I have a magnifying glass, some pencils, carpenter pencils, some layout tools, a knife, I'll open this side. These are held, by the way, with these clips. These are cabinet door clips. They work good. They absolutely don't fail. Again, I've updated a lot of tools. This is the Irwin. I don't like it as well as the Vaughn. I state that in another video, but it's a good tool, especially for carpentry. I like the Vaughn for more uh, in the shop. I like the Vaughn better, period, but the Irwin's okay. Uh, actually, Home, uh, Home Depot quit selling the Irwin and Lowe's quit selling the Vaughn, which was my favorite. Now Lowe's carries the Irwin, which used to be sold under the Marple's name at Home Depot. Home Depot does not even carry a Japanese saw anymore in my area, which is ridiculous. And they carry DeWalt hand saws, which are good. This is a Stanley, it's the same thing. These are good saws. I'm trying the new Irwin. It's a good saw for carpentry work and rough cutting. So th this works, and then I carry a coping saw. I have many coping saws. I do like, for a quickie, low price tool, it's a well-made tool, is the Lowe's Cobalt coping saw is an excellent tool, and I have two or three of them, and they're good tools. I said in another video, I'm trying and using these DeWalt tapes now and they're good tools. You, I talk about it in another video. Uh, I carry an old number 57 low angled Miller's Falls block plane. It actually does have the adjustable mouth. I don't use that very much. I don't think it's essential. I got a good buy on this tool in the flea market and tuned it up and restored it and it's a great block plane. I'm not obsessed about low angle planes. And I'm not obsessed about uh, adjustable mounts, but it, th this is a great tool. If you see one of these clean, you should buy it. It's a Miller's Falls number 57. I hope you don't buy them too many on eBay because I want to get another one and the prices seem to be going up. But th this is a good tool. Uh, my normal go-to block plane is a Stanley 12220 which I use in the shop and I have some Craftsman. They're, they're, it's actually a Craftsman, but it's probably made by Stanley. I have some others I use that are good uh, block planes. I actually use number four quite a lot. And I carry, this is a homemade uh, marking gauge. I've had this probably a good 25 years. And it's a good all-purpose uh, marking gauge with a cheap thumb screw and uh, a dowel and a oak stock. Piece of a blade cut and filed and put in there. I have others that I've, uh, many of them that I've made, homemade ones. Uh, I talk about it in another video. I carry a two foot level in here. I've got a Miller Spalls, the economy model that they used to have a line. Miller Spalls, number four plane, excellent. Those are excellent planes tuned up and, and sharpen well, those are as good a cutter as anything there is. Uh, I carry, if you can see in here, a paint scraper. You 
uh, you'd be surprised how useful that is. And learn how to file all those and sharpen them, put the burr on because they're great. Um, and I carry a smaller tape or lightweight. Sometimes I want a lightweight tape, a 16 footer. I carry a sliding two foot T square. It's like a drywall square, only only a two foot version. You open it up and it makes 90, and it's a good square. I carry a center finding rule. Um, decent steel rule I think is essential for me. I do have a two-sided Smith diamond sharpener. Uh, if I need to quickly dress a chisel or something I can do it. Sharpen a knife I can do it. Um, I sew um, the best I can with the equipment I have. I sew I mean, this is a Tool roll. I've made a lot of these. This works. I've proven to myself this is a concept that works. And I carry more hand tools in here that very carefully selected what I need and use. So I have a regular utility knife. I like a fence cutting style. For pliers, I carry a four in hand rasp, four in one rasp. I have a cheap traditional compass scriber I use a lot. This is a marking awl that I have filed facets on. I talk about that in another video. I have the Narex and I love it. And you should watch that other video about the benefits of a marking awl, only especially one with four sides to it instead of round. Uh, toothbrush is always handy for cleaning stuff. Um, crescent wrench. End nippers are essential for a carpenter. You should always have these. Um, pump pliers or if you will channel locks. Standard pliers I think are essential. A small crescent wrench. A flat bar is essential. A really little flat bar is essential for demo and carpentry work. It's a sliding bevel, uh, bent nose, needle nose, uh, industrial scissors. There's another little small uh, six inch rule in here. Um, and then two large screwdrivers, a number three and a number, number three Phillips and a, and a large uh, slotted 516 slot, slot head screwdriver, which I don't use a lot, but I think you got to have one. My main bread and butter screwdriver in this case is right here. And it'll do 90% of what I need. I have other tools in, in the van that I carry, but this gets me through every day. Uh, there's more stuff up in here that I didn't mention. Uh, there is some drill bits. These are hex shank, hex shank twist drills that you can put in a good ratcheting screwdriver, and it's hard. Hard. I've never been pleased with ratcheting screwdrivers, so it's hard to find one you like. I do like this Cobalt model. It's well made. Uh, I do have a Leatherman I carry for opening uh, packaging. So this works pretty well. And uh, it's, a, it's a good toolbox design. And again, my credit goes to Jeremy Brun for his design. Um, and... Uh, thanks. You might want to. Thanks for watching. You might want to consider building this box. Um, if nothing else, I think it impresses people to walk up with a wooden box of some type. It has dovetails on the on the joinery down here. The bottom is also solid pine, and there are dovetails here through dovetails, hand cut dovetails. That's the only kind I do is hand cut, and it is a solid bottom. Again, though, there's a little till there. All solid wood. Um, the only thing not solid is the bottom of the till is a piece of masonite. But otherwise, uh, it seems to be working pretty well, and people sure like to look at it when I get it out. But it's it's got a wide array of, of really needed tools for me. So, thanks for watching.